Today I want to talk about precision. How much precision do we need? I want to talk about three areas, engineering, language, and the arts. Let's start with engineering or mathematics, science in general. So I like to use the example of the tilted table versus the tilted skyscraper. Imagine if your table in the kitchen is a little tilted. Not a big deal, right? Like let's say it's a, a tiny bit off, it's like a centimeter lower on one end. You might have like maybe when you're eating soup or something, it might be a little annoying because it's, it's gonna be a little higher on one end. But the bottom line is it's still a usable table. There's no, there's no real danger. So you don't need that much precision in building your table. If you're a centimeter off, not such a big deal. Now the tilted skyscraper, imagine every, every meter up or every yard up, you're a centimeter off from perfectly vertical. By the time you go all the way, like let's say 100 stories up, that's gonna be a pretty significant deviation. Or let's say you're NASA and you're trying to launch a satellite or you're, you're doing some stuff and you're like one degree off. So when you're talking about planetary scales, galactic scales, one degree, that's going to be a huge difference in trajectories. Same thing with like GPS. If your GPS is off by a, a, a few, a few like degree, if there's some issue, basically things get magnified. So in engineering, we want to have as much precision as possible. Now, how much precision do you need? The, what I, the theme, I want, the idea I want to get across is it depends on the application. So the more the better, but like I said, if you're doing something that's not very complex, you're building a chair, you're building a table, you may not need that much precision. If you're, doing, if you're building a 100-story building or you're building some very complicated technology, as we discussed in the previous videos, you're, um, having perfectly precise instruments is difficult to impossible. So you're gonna have to work extra hard to make sure you get rid of imprecision as much as possible so that once you scale things up, it's not gonna balloon into crazy things you did not intend. And this also relates to the chaos theory that I did earlier in the, in the series where we talked about, as I'm sure many of you are familiar, the butterfly effect, right? So little things can have profound effects downstream. So with engineering, you know, that's pretty much obvious stuff. I want to leave you guys with that, that you want to strive for as much as possible, but use your common sense. Like if you're measuring your living room, you, you don't need it to be 0 0.0001 Per, you know, uh, set me, milli, nanometers precise. You can just say it's uh, you know 16 feet by 8 feet. That's good enough. But if you're maybe like a surgeon, you're doing surgery. You you can't afford to be a centimeter off. That's the difference between hitting like a major blood vessel or the heart. So I'll leave it there for engineering. Now here is where it gets interesting. Language. In language. I think there is a huge epidemic in society, and not just today, historically, where we would benefit from a lot of more precision. Now, one of, the one of the beautiful things that I love about mathematics is the rigor and the precision. Now, we kind of take it for granted, but you know, when a Japanese mathematician or scientist or a, an American uh, engineer or a Russian or a Chinese or an Indian or, or a Middle Eastern or a South American, no matter where you're from, uh, you, you look at an equation that says five plus two, it's not ambiguous, we know it's seven. Or if you look at a blueprint, a schematic for a building, architects anywhere in the world, if you give them the blueprint, or engineers, if you give them a blueprint, they will build you the same thing. In language, we use terms such as liberal, conservative, morality, consciousness, good and evil, right and wrong, bad, so faster, slower. When, when we use things such as like, I'm a liberal, or I'm a conservative, or I'm deeply religious, or I'm deeply spiritual, or, or intelligent, or words such as that, they are often subject to misinterpretation and many misunderstandings. 
So the key thing I want to get across with language is we would benefit a lot more from having more precision. Now, how do we do that? One of the key, there are kind of two keys and they're interrelated. And that is to use a physical referent. One of my heroes, Jacques Fresco, really brought this idea to my attention. So when I say a word like consciousness, a great way, for example, the problem with that is your idea of consciousness might be different from my idea of consciousness. And so when you know scientists study consciousness, they may be having different things in mind. So for one person that may be, why do you do the things you do? Or the, for another person is being self-aware for another, per like there might be slight variations. And like I said, in mathematics, we have rigorous definitions. So integers are numbers zero, one, two, three, four onwards, negative one, negative two, negative three downwards. But in language, it's very imprecise. Now, I'll mention this in a bit, that can be great for artistic purposes, but not if you're trying to communicate an idea. And a lot of misunderstandings, a lot of conflict, a, a lot of violence, a, a lot of needless suffering arises from this miscommunication and misunderstanding. So how do you get around this? So one thing, like I said, is use physical reference. So you could say, when I say good, I am referring to making people healthier and when I say healthier I mean to live longer or to not have diabetes in other words I've made a very specific concrete I've tied it to the real world I'm not even if I say I want people to be healthy what does healthy mean does healthy mean they feel happy does healthy mean they are athletic they are aesthetically some proportion they have you know maybe it's all of the above but your definition of healthy, for example, for me, maybe healthy is living to be 300 years old, but for you, it's to have a six pack. So using physical reference. And now in addition to that, it's helpful to give an example. So for example, in math, you could say, when I say integers, I mean, blah, blah, blah. I mean numbers such as zero, one, two, three onwards, negative one, negative two, negative three downwards. So I've given you an example. So when I say, um, I believe, like I, I'm a liberal, for example, like what does that mean? Or I'm an independent. So I could say, well, when I say liberal, I mean that I am in support of having a clean environment for having good education, things like that. I make it very specific and I tell you what I mean. So you have to define your words when you're talking to people. Because don't assume that, you know, people have very different backgrounds and experiences and maybe in your community or amongst your friends, you guys already know what you mean, but you meet a new group of people and you could say, you know, I hate Democrats, I hate Republicans, I, I love independence. What, a, you know, there might be different types of Republicans, different types of Democrats. They're, they're all sorts of flavors and people might misinterpret what you're saying. So I think it would help everybody all around if when you're using these loaded terms like human consciousness or evil, uh, let me give you a great example. So many religions oftentimes, I mean, this is the source of so many religious conflicts. You can read the Bible, uh, whatever religious doc, it could be Christianity, Islam, Judaism, whatever. And let's say it's Christianity, you read the Bible and one person says, I think Jesus meant this. Another person says, I think he meant that. And, or, or you're even a book, you're reading Shakespeare or whatever. I think he meant this. I think the author meant that. I think she meant that. So while that's very interesting for artistic purposes, for communication that can create a lot of discord. So I encourage you guys to make what you're talking about very specific by using physical reference if possible and giving specific examples as to how you're using these words and what they mean. Now, is more precision always desirable? Like, should, should we be perfectly precise? I want to talk about the arts now. So, in the arts, I would argue that having perfect precision, infinite precision, is not always desirable. So let me give you guys a specific example. Let's say you're doing music and many of you are familiar with MIDI, which is the, like, the, digit, the digitized form of playing notes. 
So if you quantize something, that means you lock all your notes to a specific beat. So if it's a, a little bit off the grid, the, the quantization moves it right. So it's right on beat one, beat two, beat three. So it's very correct. Now, if you do that, let's say you have a human drummer and you take the human drummers playing and you quantize it or, or other performer, pianist, guitarist, whatever. If you take that drum rhythm and you quantize it, suddenly it might feel too mechanical. It might feel robotic. It might lose some of the emotion. In music playing, you know, sometimes you want to, it's, you know, they, they'll refer to it oftentimes. There are other terms, but let's say rubato, R-U-B-A-T-O, where you kind of want to be flexible with the rhythm. You, you go a little faster here, a little slower, but sometimes even, not even such general things, you might just want to have a, a little imperfection. So like, you know, in art, imperfections can be great. Now, if you have a lot of imprecision, for example, you might think, oh, well, you know, Ilya said we should not have, uh, maybe in art it's a good idea to not have too much precision, so I'm going to be really sloppy with the beat. If you're way off, right, like if you're, if you're very imprecise, then it might come off as amateurish. So I'm not arguing or suggesting that you want to make it um, super imprecise. I'm saying that there's humans have some natural degree of imprecision and we can't really exceed that. We, we, can, we can improve on it with skills, but there's some like, for example, humans have some amount of time where it takes us to respond, right? So if, if I'm told to press a button and let's say I hear a noise, there's some amount of time be, before I can process it and hit the button. Same thing with our rhythm. We're gonna be a little imprecise, whether we're drawing, whether we're doing whatever. So I think in art, a little bit of imprecision can actually be a good thing. So to recap, in engineering, we want the more precision, the better. However, you can get away with less depending on the application. So the application is critical. In language, I would argue that adding precision by using physical reference and giving examples defi and defining our terms would solve a lot of global conflicts as well as individual misunderstandings. And in the arts, I think things are pretty much fine as they are. Sometimes we want more precision, sometimes we want less, but we, we don't want to eradicate imprecision altogether. A little bit can be a good thing. All right, hope that was helpful. See you guys in the next video.